There are many kinds of animal and plant cells that have different architectures and do different things. But many of the parts of these cells are the same and have the same functions. If we created a typical animal cell, it might look something like this. Even though no specific animal cell looks exactly like this one, it contains features shared by most such cells. Surrounding the outside of the cell is the cell membrane. This membrane is very thin, only about one one hundred thousandth of a millimeter thick. A photograph of a cell membrane taken with the help of an electron microscope reveals that it has three layers two dark outer layers sandwiching a clear middle layer. The cell membrane acts as a boundary between a cell and the environment outside, but it also allows certain substances to pass in and out. Particles of food, for example, can enter through the membrane so that they can be used as raw materials for manufacturing and as fuel for energy. Oxygen can also enter a cell to be used for burning fuel. Other things pass out of the cell through the membrane, including waste like carbon dioxide gas and important chemical products that the cell has manufactured. Inside the cell membrane, there are many different structures called organelles, which literally means little organs. One organelle, the nucleus, is the control center of the cell. The nucleus has a membrane that has pores in it. These allow certain molecules to enter or leave the nucleus. Inside the nucleus, there is fiber-like material called chromosomes. Chromosomes contain the cell's genetic information. This genetic information is like an architect's blueprint that determines how wood, glass, and other materials are used to build a house. The genetic blueprint in a person's chromosomes determines how different proteins are put together. These proteins are responsible for physical features, such as the color of a person's hair and eyes, the shape of her nose, and even whether she is susceptible to certain kinds of diseases. From the information contained in the chromosome blueprints, the nucleus sends messages to the cell's cytoplasm, which makes up everything else that is inside the cell. The cytoplasm is composed of water, minerals, vitamins, salts, a variety of chemicals, as well as different organelles. Some of the organelles are called endoplasmic reticulum. Among other things, endoplasmic reticulum serve as the cell's assembly lines because they are where protein products are put together based on instructions from the nucleus. The endoplasmic reticulum serve other functions as well. They're like highways that provide a transportation network. Among other things, they connect different organelles in a cell and allow them to exchange materials. Mitochondria are another kind of organelle in the cytoplasm. Inside a mitochondrion, there are highly folded membranes. Here, chemical reactions take place that use oxygen to burn particles of food for energy. Mitochondria are often called the powerhouses of the cell because they are responsible for providing for the cell's energy needs. The number of mitochondria varies in different kinds of cells. Very active cells, like muscle cells, contain thousands of mitochondria. Before particles of food can be burned in mitochondria, they are first processed by other organelles called lysosomes. These contain chemicals called enzymes that digest small food particles that have passed into the cell. Lysosomes are also the garbage disposal units of the cell. They break down worn-out cell parts and gather waste products from the cell's cytoplasm. Another kind of organelle, the Golgi bodies, are the cell's packaging centers. Here, proteins are mixed with other chemicals and enclosed in bubble-like containers that then break away and move to the cell membrane where their contents are released from the cell.